What's going on guys? I hope everybody's having a good July 4th weekend. Welcome back to my series on how to make a game like The Binding of Isaac. In this video, we're going to be coding this spider. So in a previous video, we made this zombie that chases the player around the room and it just follows him in a direct straight line. The spider is just building on that where he does the same thing, but he also has an attack where he'll actually launch himself at the player and uh, it makes it harder to dodge. Also, all of the enemies can bounce off each other the same way the zombies did. So if I put them side by side, uh, you can see that they kind of bounce off each other. This makes it so not only did they like stack on top of each other, um, they don't, sorry, they don't stack on top of each other, but it makes it harder to dodge them. Also, if you hit the spider in midair while he's jumping, um, it will, oh, I'm dead, okay. Uh, it will cancel his attack as well, and we're going to do that. Uh, but uh, yeah, if you guys are enjoying the series, make sure you like the video and subscribe to my channel. And yeah. All right. Uh, so the entire project is available to download for free from the description of the video. You're welcome to download it and use whatever you want from it in your game or whatever you want to. This uh, mechanical spider is also going to be posted in the description of the video for free. You're welcome to download it and use it in your game if you want to as well. I had a lot of struggles putting this into the game from Blender into Unity. And I think if I went through the entire process and actually copied it from Blender to Unity again, it would probably be a very long video. So we're not going to do that. I'm just going to go through all the stuff that I did to make this work. If you drag the spider into your project folder at the bottom here, it should look like this. And then when you're done that, you can drag it into the scene. If you double click on it in the scene view, it should zoom in on it. And you can see that it's starting below the ground, but that's just because the origin of my ground is actually above the ground. It's not directly flat, and that's why that's below the ground. The origin of the spider should be correct. There's some uh, import settings that we need to change here on the right. So if you go to the rig tab, we need to change this to create from this model. And then in the animations, there's walking and idling that are both looping animations. So you need to check this checkbox that says loop time and turn that on and then just press apply at the bottom right. So in the uh, zombie video, we made this shader graph for the cartoon effect of the enemies. I'm probably going to be using this on the majority of the enemies because that way they can all kind of have like the same feel to them. Uh, so they're all going to be mechanical enemies and they're all going to have like a cartoon kind of gradient on them. So this is the shader. I'm not going to go over it. Uh, let me just uh, make it full screen and zoom in. You can copy it if you want to. This I covered this in the zombie video and I'm not going to cover it again right now. So you can copy this if you want to. Or I, I think I just followed some video and I linked that video in the zombie video at the bottom. So if you want, you can go find that. But you can see like in this one, this just adds like you can see like these little sh shader shadows or whatever. If you look here on the right, these are the settings that I use. So this is the lighter material and this is the darker material so in your mechanical spider model if you go to the materials tab you can actually apply this to the uh, correct thing so there's the main spider metal and then there is the uh, armor spider armor material and just press apply and then this should overwrite all of your required parts and make all of them the cartoon material so inside of these settings, uh, I'll just go through the settings really quickly. So I changed the colors to like gray and a darker gray, but the shades, this is how many different shades there are. So the lower the number, the more lines that will appear. So let me just show you. If you change this to three, oh, this is the, the, the lighter material. So if you change this to one, for example, you see there's more lines that differentiate. And then the higher number this is, the less lines there are. I kind of like it more spaced out because when you're looking at it from the top down view, you can't really see the detail as much anyway. The minimum is like the color difference. So I have it going from 0.1 to 3. So for example, if you change this to zero, it's going from black to, and then three is like very, very light. So uh, this making this range bigger just makes the cartoon effect more apparent. I'm doing 0.1. You could even do like maybe 0.2 to 3. But uh, yeah, so I mean, that's how that's working. And the max is like the higher number you change this, the lighter the max is. So the min to the max is like, uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. But yeah, so the, the, that's the cartoon shader that I've applied to the uh, spider. Let's just grab him and make him just a little bit bigger. If you click this paperclip button on the right, you can just drag him up. So he's just a little bit larger. So he kind of matches the one that I'm using right now. Okay, so this is the next problem that I ran into. Inside of Blender, I didn't add any scale animations to any of the bones for any of the three animations. But for some reason, when I imported it into Unity, it added them. So if you go inside of the evil mechanical spider and you double click on one of the animations like idle, you can see that it added the scale. And what it did was it set the scale to one. So no matter how big or small you make the spider, it will 
it will resize it and will overwrite it. So what I had to do is I had to separate these three animations from the mechanical spiders. So if you take them, you can go to idle, jump attack, and walking, and uh, you can copy them, like control C. And let me just create a folder for this so I don't overwrite the ones I have. So uh, spider animations. Um, and you could just paste them inside of this. And so inside of this, what I had to do is I had to double click on each of these and go in and delete the scale manually. I think it might be something to do with the new version of Blender. I don't recall this happening on any of the previous versions. So if you delete the scale, this will fix this problem. So let me show you the problem. Hang on, let me apply this. So, so I got this uh, mechanical spider. Let's turn off the other spider for now. And we're going to turn off the zombie as well so that they don't try to kill me. So if you've created an avatar for the spider on the right here, this should automatically be added when you've dragged it into the scene. And we're just going to create another animator controller so I don't mess up the one that I have. So we'll call this spider tutorial animator. And you could just drag this right onto this slot here. And we're going to do this with walking because... Um, I've already just fixed the idle one, so the idle won't do it anymore. But if you right click in the animator, you can create a new state. This will be the default state, so this will happen immediately automatically. And if you drag walking in there and you press play, the animation should play. And what you'll notice is that the spider has resized itself. And if you click on the spider and you try to change the scale, it won't allow you to change the scale. It will just change itself back. And this is because the animation is setting the scale, even though it's not like in Blender, I don't have any bones that are doing this. I think that Unity automatically adds that and it has to have like a reference or something. And maybe I should have left that in Blender. I'm, I'm not too sure. But anyway, I think it's something to do with a new version of Blender. But if you don't do this, your, your spider will be stuck at the scale that you imported it in. As. So I had to go into each of these animations. So I'll show you if you go into walking and you delete scale on all of these. So like I said, after you delete the scale on all of them, it will go back to normal and then you could resize it however you want to. But this is just something I think it's something with a new version of Blender that doesn't allow you to for some reason the scale got imported into unity if anyone knows why you can leave a comment below i'm sure that it's something dumb that everyone already knows but uh yeah so that's a problem that i had to fix all right so after that i added a box collider and a rigid body to the character for the physics make sure that you make the box collider way taller than the spider i'm resizing the spider when the game starts so sometimes when the spider is smaller the box collider will shrink with him and it needs to be above him so that way when you do your attack because he's on the ground level, if it's not above him, your attack might not hit the spider. Uh, after you add the rigid body, you can use all the default settings, except for you need to freeze the rotation. If you don't freeze the rotation, he'll be able to like fall over and stuff, and that will mess him up. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty much all I did for like actually adding him. And now we need to go over the script. So he obviously has a spider, quote unquote, spider script that's attached to him. So let's double click on that. Okay, so and before we get started on the script, it's important to note that the spider script is inheriting from you unit and not mono behavior because we have already written a unit class that is what we're using for all of our enemies and we wrote this back in the a star algorithm video so this was quite a while ago there's a video in my channel called a star algorithm and you could go back and watch it if you've downloaded the project from the description of the video you should already have this but um, if we press F12 on unit, it should open up that class. F12 goes to the definition of whatever you have selected. And this is what we're using for um, chasing the player around and handling uh, when the zombie gets hit and calculating. You see like all those little dots that are on the ground and all those gizmos and stuff. So this is what we're using by uh, for all of our enemies and this is actually not inheriting from mono behavior it's inheriting from enemy damage script which we made in the zombie video if you press f12 on this this makes it so that when you hit the enemy he flashes white let's go into the game for a second i'll show you so you see when we hit our enemy he flashes white and slow it slowly goes back to his default color so the spider has a lot of uh, different uh, objects inside of him. So he's not all one object. He's got like 
his body, all of his legs are different objects, his eyes are different objects, everything about him is a different object. And we want to flash all of the materials on him at the same time. So we wrote this damage script and there's like a whole video that's on that. And then when he dies, he explodes into a uh, kind of standard enemy explosion that we made in the zombie video. So there's been a bunch of videos where we've been adding these different things that we're going to be reusing on all of our enemies. So if you haven't been following the series, again, you can just download this entire project and it will be included. Uh, and you could just look at the code if you want to. So this uh, enemy damage script is what actually makes him flash when he gets hit. It's kind of a complicated process. And I went through that. I took an entire video to go through that. So then the unit class is how we're handling the A-star algorithm to make him actually chase after the player or move at random or do whatever you want him to do. And then the zombie script is because, oh, sorry, this is a zombie script. The spider script is what would be customized specifically for the spider. So like chasing after the player, that's not specific to the spider. All of our enemies are like, not all of them, but a lot of our enemies are going to chase after the player and that's going to be like a default thing. But this script is going to be all the things that are unique to the spider and not uh universal amongst all of our enemies so at the start of the script we're getting a reference to the animator and the rigid body of the spider um this is just a little bit better than getting it via you know, get component and because we're going to make a prefab out of our spider we'll only have to do this once and then we'll uh, just replicate the spider uh this doesn't need to be here it's not doing anything uh so we're creating the start method with a new keyword but this is only because inside of the unit class we already have a start method and inside of the start method of the unit class we're calling the start method of the uh, enemy damage script so all of these have a start method and all, we want to call all of them by creating this as a new it's because we already have a start method so we're creating a new start method from this start method we're calling the base start method which we'll call the unit start method which also has base.start inside of it base is the class that you're inheriting from so we're inheriting from unit so base is unit and we're calling the start method because we want all of the start methods to play, not just uh, this one specifically. We're setting the size to be a random between 1 and 1 1.8. So this will just change his size on the start. And we're starting this coroutine called jumpum. And so inside of the jumpum coroutine, every 3 to 10 seconds, we're going to stop chasing the player. That's what hit player does. We have where it, it checks if hit player is true. It will keep, uh, sorry, if the, uh, when it's doing the follow path method, if hit player is true, it will return. So it won't chase the player while hit player is true. So because while he's jumping, we don't want him to keep chasing the player. We want him to do the jump. And then when he's done jumping, he can go back to chasing the player afterwards. Then we're playing this jump animation from our animator. So in our animator for the spider, so there's three animations. There's running, idle, and jump. So uh, jump is just the jump attack uh, animation that we have added. So we're playing this jump animation and then we're adding force to the front of the spider and it's also random. So he's going to jump a random speed in front of him. And he's also this part where we're adding a new vector. This is height. So we're going to get him off the ground as well. So he's going to jump a random height between zero and 50 while he's doing this. And we have to set the force mode to impulse so that it just all of the force is applied at once. And then we're going to start the coroutine for resetting the hit player. So after one second, it's going to turn this variable to be false so that he can continue chasing the player. When we're done all of this, we're going to call this coroutine again. So then in another three to 10 seconds, he could jump again. So he'll just keep jumping every, every three to 10 seconds. And you could obviously change these values or you could even make a public variable at the top to take care of that. All right, so that's pretty much it for the script. Uh, one last thing that we did is I added a uh, outline effect to the spider. So, oh, it's not on my spider right now. Oh no, okay, I created an outside object for the spider um, for the rotation. So there's a script called outline that I covered in the zombie video. It's just a script from the asset store that just adds an outline to the character. But basically, uh, let me just run the game and I'll show you. This only shows up in the actual game, like when it's running. Oh, that's really big, I don't really like that. Uh, maybe I'll lower the max size, but uh, if you look at the uh, spider, you can see that it has like the black outline around it. That's just this uh, outline script that's on the character. I think that adds like quite quite a lot to like the way that it actually looks. And I'm going to be putting that on all of my characters. But uh, yeah, that's going to be it for the day. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy like the free projects and the free content that I give away. But uh, yeah, hopefully I'll see you guys in the next one.